<laughs> Hi everyone and welcome back. Today we are going to make this liquid hot magma and it's a relatively straightforward material. We've got like this gooey magma layer underneath and then we've got this little crust thing going on on top and the crust kind of has its own little emissive crackle if you will. And this is what it looks like in substance. So, you know, it, it's not tiny, but it's not huge either. And we might as well get started with it. So we're going to make a new substance. I did this at 1K. And all this does right here is just set in the, you know, what it starts out with. This is the parent size that we're going to be using. But we can always change it later if you want it higher or lower. So we'll name the graph and we'll click OK. And here it's giving us this 1K that we set in. But if we wanted to set it up back to 2K or 512, we could do that just as easily. So all that does is just telling you where you're starting your parent size. Now in the new uh, version of Substance, they've got these colors that they attach to stuff. And we'll keep those in there for now. I am going to move some stuff around though. I like my height next to my normal. So we'll switch that around like that. And then... Also, we're not going to be using an ambient occlusion, and I'm lazy, so I'm just going to turn this into my emissive. And importantly, we need to change the usage to an emissive. Now, we haven't set this new instruction out to the renderer, so it still looks exactly the same. And I can do that one of, three, one of two ways. I can do this individually here in my ambient occlusion and just reassign it. Oh, except I'm not using ambient occlusion, I'm doing uh, emissive. So change it to emissive, and all of a sudden now it starts to emit. Let's just put the black in here. Now, though, it seems to still be getting, uh, it, it's turning it into ambient occlusion information. I've had it happen to me before. It's just, it's weird. Let's reassign it a couple of times. That usually does it. There we go. Yeah, I did it individually. I have to assign the whole group. I don't get why it does that. If you have it happen to you, just kind of jiggle around with it a little bit. It should work. So we've now set that emissive to black, and our colors are now coming in correctly. So these outputs are right now. Let's start building our material. The first thing we're going to deal with is that magma layer underneath. And I'm going to come into my library, and I'm going to get cells 1. And I'm also going to get... A Perlin noise and this is what we're going to base that on now I don't need this at parent size I don't need either one of these at parent size uh, so let's start with the cells and I'm gonna bring this down let's do parent minus three that should do it and same with the Perlin noise and that you can see that it, it, it takes a lot less processing power now uh, to do these when they're you know when they're not as big and we don't need them big here we're not doing any of the detail work remember this is just that underlying layer of magma so it's all pretty fuzzy to begin with and there's no need to have that extra information if we're not going to be using it now we're going to want to set these down also because this is like a very fine pattern right now so in addition to lowering down the size of the actual image we're going to bring the scale down a bit too it's probably right, something like that. Again, this is an aesthetic thing. This really depends on how, well, well I'll show you what it, it, it's these bits here. We're going to have like these almost hexagonal, you know, these, these are following the shapes of those cells. So set them to whatever size you want this nonsense underneath to, to do. So if you want this to be like really finer bubbles, then make it smaller. But that's what I set that in. And the Perlin noise, I want to match that more or less. So I'm going to set it down to kind of the same thing. So they're all matchy now. Next, I'm going to get a warp node. Actually, we're going to need a couple of those. So I'm just going to dupe some out and we'll leave them for later. And I want to start making those, those cracks that we were just looking at. And a great way to flatten out an image is to warp it against itself. And what that's doing is it's taking these dark bits in between and it's kind of getting rid of those gradients in between a little bit and I'm going to 
set that intensity up to two. So it's really getting rid of everything except for those black lines in between. And then I'm going to blur it because I want them a bit thicker than what I've got here. So by blurring it, it's going to give it a, um, a bit more of a more thickness once we, st well, we're going to do levels on it afterwards. So it's going to give us thicker lines. I had it set at 0.66 in my notes. So that's what I'm going to use. And then we're going to get a levels node and we're going to take those thick gray lines and turn them into thick black lines. I think that's probably a bit too much. I want to I want to look at my end result here. Now, I want to get some variation in here, so I'm going to come back while I'm looking at my levels node. I've double clicked on my levels and then I'm single clicking on my blur. I'm going to start fooling around with this a little bit. And let's maybe bring the warp. Oh, no wonder the warp intensity is a little high. There we go. So, probably something like that. It's it's starting to look a bit more organic than you know what we have in here it's giving it a bit more variety and this is going to be reflected in colors so i'm thinking about my yellows and my oranges my deepest areas are going to be my hottest and then as we get cooler and cooler going up the height map we're going to get darker and redder and purpler with our colors so as i'm looking at this map i'm kind of trying to imagine that and i'm pretty happy with that we can always come back and change it but this is you know all still very static you know what let's let's plug it in so we can actually take a look at what's going on in here so i'll plug this into my well it can be gray for now it's okay and i'm okay with that but it's not moving around at all so let's come back to our cells here and give them a bit of an animation and start taking a look at this in the player my disorder here is going to do a very good job of that so all i really need to do is put you know, a timer on here. So I'm going to make an empty function and I'm going to start adding my variables, my timer. But I happen to know from experience and experimentation that that is going to be just way too fast. So I'm going to slow it down by multiplying it by a smaller number. In this case, I'm multiplying it by 0.01 because I don't really want it moving very fast at all. I just kind of want it sort of slowly boiling underneath. And we're going to get a multiplication and we're going to set that as the output node. I'm going to copy this because whatever I have going on here, I want it to match in here because these are kind of moving together. So I'm going to come into my Perlin noise and I'm going to come into its disorder and I'm just going to paste this in here and set this as the output node. So they're both doing the same thing. And now I'm going to grab up this other warp node and I'm going to take these lines here and I'm going to warp them against this Perlin. And it kind of starts, you know, getting them looking a little bit more curvy. And if we look at the intensity here, so I'm going to bring this up to two for a second. If I move this around, it also affects those lines in a, in a cool and interesting way. And so I decided rather than leaving this a static thing, I'm going to let it fluctuate and I decide, you know, and then you pick a couple of numbers. So I decided instead of having it fluctuate between zero and one, I'm going to have it fluctuate between one and two. So in addition to the disorder of these things moving around, they're also going to kind of throb a little bit. So we're going to come into the warp and we're going to go into the intensity. And now I'm going to grab a wave and that's going to help me get that to cycle between one and two. So I'm going to grab up a couple of constants and I'm going to get an addition node. So the wave goes between zero and one and negative one. So I mean, it, I'm not worried about the positives and negatives. Essentially what it's doing is it's going, now that I've set this number one in, between one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. But I don't want it to go between 1 and 0. I want it to go between 1 and 2. So all I really need to do is add the number 2 to whatever is going on in here, and that's just taking the whole cycle, and it's just moving it up above 0. Okay, so we've got this basic thing set in. Let's publish this out and see what it looks like.
I'm going to do it at 1K because it's going to run a little bit better. So we've got our disorder happening. The things themselves are changing their orientation, but they're also moving between, you know, in their warps. So that's what that underlying thing looks like. If you wanted to do more or less of one or the other, then feel free to change it. You know, in fact, I think I might up that disorder a little bit now that I'm looking at it. Let's come back in here and maybe get that to go a little bit faster. And since we did it to this one, I'm also going to want it to do it to this one. Yeah. It's all right. Okay. Let us continue. What I also want to do is kind of make them a little bit less perfect, like the edges especially. And to do that, we are going to, well, we're going to use a bunch more warps, but I'm also going to need a transform 2D. And I'm going to take these cells here and I'm going to make a much smaller version of them. So I don't know. I didn't even mark down in my notes how much I did, but probably like that. And what we're going to do after we blur it a little bit, I had 8.75. Let's see how that works. Obviously, numbers change as we do this. Oop, yeah, I do here. Oh, I got a directional blur. That's why I was like, why is it all stretched out? I want a regular blur. And we're going to set this at 8.75 to start with because that's what I've got in my notes. And we'll take it from there. And then we're going to take, actually, we're going to need another warp, two warps here. We are going to create kind of a bumpier version of what we've already done. So I'm actually going to need another transform in here. And I'm also going to make this smaller. So whatever I used for here is what I'm going to use for the purlin as well. I think, I, I think we did it twice. Yeah, that looks the same. All right. We're going to take one of these warps. And we're just going to get these cells to look a bit bumpier. Obviously, that's too bumpy. I had this set down to 0.15. So it's taking our originals that are like nice and smooth, and it's just giving them more of that. And then we're going to take this, and we're going to take what we just made, and we're going to warp it against this transform so it's getting it's it's really turning them from being these perfect things and giving us a lot more grayscale variation and this is going to come in very very handy when we start doing our colors because it's not just going to be like two or three colors you're going to get this really nice gradient in between but at the same time I don't want to get that mushiness in my lines and that's what I really like about this thing that I just made here. So we're going to now combine the more subtle color variations in the non-cracks, and then we're going to overlay the cracks. So we're going to need another blend node, and I'm going to get a levels, and we're going to accentuate those cracks. Let's to keep it on there. And we're going to ramp it back up to our parent size in this node here. So I'm going to keep this the way it is. And I want to start looking at it on my 1K. So I'm going to single click on my levels node. And now I'm going to adjust this specifically for my, you know, for my cracks in the magma. So this is going to be like the lightest, the yellowest of all of the stuff. So it's, I want to be relatively sparing with it. So something like that. And we're going to now want to over, well, actually, we're going to use a darken blend. And I want this to be the place where I actually turn it into, you know, the parent size. So we're going to switch this to relative to parent. So this is a great color map right here. It's got some variations for the color. In fact, let's, let's put another levels node in here. Maybe change the levels around a little bit so they going to match our colors how we want them to be. But this map is going to be a little too harsh for our normal. So we're going to kind of have to make a slightly gentler version of it. Let's, let's get our colors squared away before we do anything else. 
I've got a gradient map in here. Let's come in here and do that now. Our deepest place on the height map is going to correspond to our brightest areas. That's where they're hottest. So the dark is actually going to be the lightest. We're going to use our yellows in there. And then this is going to be the coolest area of our magma. So it's not the crust, so it's not as cool as the crust, but it's going to be in the reds rather than in the yellows. So maybe like that. Uh, we, can, we can mess around with it later. That's kind of purple, but more like that. And we might add another point in there later, but for now that's fine. Let's get it, that into our color and into our emissive. We might as well put it in there now, too. And let's see what our normal looks like with this map. Oh, we need a height to normal. And you'll see what I mean about it being kind of harsh. It, it's, I think it's kind of harsh. I'd like to see less of a line in here. I want it to be softer. So we really kind of want the same thing, only without this overlay. And we're just going to make a different version of it. I'm off my notes, by the way, because I'm doing this a, a different way. Let's start here with that, because here we're adjusting for color at this point already. So we'll take it one step back. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to blur it. And we're going to put this on top with a darken blend. Oh, you know the other thing we should do? I want this nice and smooth. So I'm going to come into my normal and I'm going to change the output format to 16 bits. So I'm going to go absolute 16 bits per channel and it's going to give me a smoother map. Oh, and I also want it parent size. That's the other thing. So depending on how liquidy or chunky you want this, we're going to adjust this map. In fact, I think rather than using this one right here, let's use this one right here. That's smoother. Or is it? No, it's not smoother. It's this one that's smooth. But now I'm seeing too many of those lines. So I'm going to go ahead and drop another blur in here. Ah, that's better. All right. So we've got those colors to guide us now. Let's take a look at the normals. So I think for the underlying bit like that. And I do want to see some of those lines up on top. Yeah, but that's a much smoother gradient there than we get with the color. In fact, I think what we're going to do is we're going to come back in here and maybe lighten that up. I mean, lighten it. Get rid of some of the lines because it's a little bit much. And now we can come back to our color and adjust that some more. That's pretty good. I get a little obsessive with the color. Let's see what that looks like when we publish it out. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's continue we can start setting up all the other stuff too. So next we've got our height. We're going to, well, I'm going to, I'm going to put a levels node in here just because we're going to want to adjust it on account of the, the crust that we're going to put on top of it. And I'm just going to take the whole thing and globally just make it shallower. Also just going to make sure that I've got my height set in here. Yep. So I've got the height scale set to one. And then we have our roughness. And again, I'm going to get a levels node for this. And I'm, I'm not spending a lot of time with any of this stuff because we're going to be adding crust on top of it. So this is just placeholders or stuff that we're going to be working with later. And let's take a look at what we've got here. I don't want anything super duper shiny. And I want to even it out a bit also. But then I'm going to take the whole thing and I'm going to globally make it lighter. And we can put that into our roughness. And finally, we have metallic. And I, I do want to add some metallic to it because, you know, rock has got metal in it. And this is just melted rock. And again, I'm going to use levels to adjust it. So we'll probably get, you know, we'll have more metallic in the, in the higher bits. 
but it's not super duper medley either. So probably something like that. And then I'm just going to hit clean to get rid of those. And that's hitting clean is just going to get rid of anything that's not attached to an output. And we'll take a look at that again. I'll make sure I've got my height set in here. I do not. Let's put that in there. That looks all right. Okay, now we're getting ready to start working on the crust. So let's organize ourselves a little bit here. And we can draw a frame around this and call it magma. And we can start working on our crust. So that is going to be something we're going to do with an effects map. That's where it's going to get you know, it's animation, well, most of it's animation from. So we're going to have to build a shape. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to get shape node. And we'll set that to a hemisphere. And I'm also going to set the scale down a little bit, because we're going to be warping it, and we just need it a bit smaller. I had it set in as 0.68. And then I'm also going to need another Perlin noise. And I had the scale on this one set to 13. And just like the other one, in fact, we can come in and uh, it's probably wor not worth it. I'm going to uh, set the disorder on this. We're going to create an empty function. And we're going to do exactly the same thing that we did with the other one. And we'll multiply those two together. And so now this is going to be wiggling around. Then I am going to get a warp node. And we're going to warp our hemisphere by our Perlin noise. And in my notes, I had that set as 2.5. Oh, you know what we need to do? We need to set these down as well. This is going to give us the basic outline of our crust shape. So it, we're not dealing in details here. So I'll go down by minus 2, parent minus 2 for both of these. And I'm going to get a levels node. No, I bet you we can go down even further. Let's try it. Because it makes absolutely no difference to the, the resulting shape in here. And this, uh, just to make sure, I don't think it's going to be an issue, but I'm going to make this also not tile. So I'm going to set this to absolute, no tiling. And now we're just going to turn this into a flat white shape. It's got all these jaggedy edges, but it's not coming anywhere close to the edges because if we get it to go on the edges once we've put it in the effects map, we're going to start getting these weird straight lines. And that is why I made this smaller because when you warp stuff out, it brings it out to the edge. Okay, so we've got kind of the, you know, the, this blob with, with funny edges, but it's still a blob. And I want it to look a little bit more lacy than that. And to do that, I'm going to get uh, black and white spots, number one. And again, we're going to bring this way down. And I'm going to get a transform. In fact, probably don't even need the transform. Let's see what this gives us without that. It's just an awfully high number. Sometimes if you bring these down too much, it actually increases the amount of processing that needs to happen, like that. Yeah, so I'm going to put this transform in here, and we'll just make it bigger. I want it chunkier than what's coming out of here. Yeah, like that, except I kind of want it in the middle. So I'm going to put this blend node on here, and we'll coordinate the two of them together. So I'm going to get a darkened blend, and now I'm going to come back to this transform, and we're going to find what we like in here. It's pretty nice. I thought I changed this already. I guess not. I want this parent size. So I'm going to come back in here. And I'm going to make this relative to parent. Okay. I'm going to bring this back to 120, 128, parent minus 3. This is very fuzzy. Uh, I had slightly different settings when I did the test on this. I'm going to put in another levels node now because I want to crisp up those edges because the next thing I'm going to put in here is a bevel node. 
and that works a lot better when you've got these really clean edges. And then the number I had in here is negative 0.05 for my distance. And this then gives me the shape that I'm going to be feeding into my FX map. So this is going to be the little, you know, like a little crust molecule uh, that we're going to change the size and orientation on on top of this. But, you know, it, it looks crusty now. All right. So now we get our effects map. And I'm going to change this to grayscale. And we are going to plug in our height. And I'm going to right click, edit effects map. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is add some quadrants here. And, you know, the more quadrants you add, the smaller that image we feed into it is going to get. So again, you know, it depends on what you're, you're making. I ended up just having the three quadrants. And then the other thing I want to add here is I also want to add an iterate node and I want to set that as my root. Okay, so we're ready to go now. Let's get into our last quadrant, which is what's going to be spitting out our randomized information. And I'm going to put everything on this color luminosity channel for the, just to make things simpler. And we're going to change our offset and we're going to change our rotation and we're going to change the size of the images that we put in here. I fooled around with it and we're only going to change, we're only going to animate the offset. When I was, an, I mean, you can also animate the rotation a little bit. I didn't like it with that, but you know, suit yourself. What we're going to need, obviously, since we're animating, is we are going to need a timer. We'll get our dollar sign time, and we're going to need it, and we're going to need to slow it down. So we're going to have to multiply that by a number less than one. And I picked a very, very, very small number because I don't really want it moving around all that much. I just want it to not constantly be the same. So I ended up with 0 0.005. We can fool around with that later, but this is going to be our, our timer that we're going to use for everything here that we are animating. And let's also get our constant number one because we're going to need that. And so we're going to just be doing randomizations off of either this or this. I'm going to get a random node and we are going to need four of those. So make three more. We are going to need some float two vectors because we're going to be making some float twos in here. We need two of those because we need it for our offset and for our size. Our rotation is going to be a float one. And we're going to need some sequencers. Okay. Since we're putting this on the luminosity, we're going to end up with one. That's going to be our final result. All right. Let's do our offset first. This random node is going to pick a random number between zero and whatever number you feed in here. So if we feed in the time multiplied by 0.05, it's going to start at zero. And that means it's going to start on a grid. And I don't want that. So I'm going to add in here an addition node. And instead of starting at zero, we're going to start this timer at the number one. Okay, next we need to actually set that variable. And we're going to need, need a couple more of those anyway, so I'm just going to duplicate them out. So we're going to set this as our offset. And we'll plug that in there. And then next, we are going to have our rotation, and that's going to be a float one. And for the moment anyway, let's not animate it. I kind of decided against that when I was testing it out, but we may change our minds. So that's going to give us a random number between 0 and 1. And we don't really need to do anything else to it because it's a float 1. So I'm just going to plug that in here and we will set this as our rotation. And next we have our size. So again, I'm going to keep that as a, as a static number. But I don't really want it to be super... Well, you know what? Let's just set it up like this for now and then we'll fool around with it. I do want my proportions to stay the same. So I'm going to use the same number for my X and my Y. And we're going to take that float 2 and we're going to call it size. And we can set this as our output and come back into here and set up the actual effects on it. So we want to use our input image. So there's our input image. 
and we want our pattern offset to be pattern offset. So I'm going to make an empty function. I'm going to add my variable, get float to offset, and we'll set that as the output. And it's moved our stuff. Next we have, let's do our rotation because we're going to talk about size in a minute. And this is a float one. And that's moved the rotation around. Now the size, when we put in what we got right now straight out of that function, we end up with some very, very small guys. And I don't want that. I, I want them to stay more or less the same size. I don't want them to all be exactly the same, but I do want them to be within a, a narrower range. So now we're going to come back in here and we're going to decide what that range is. I'm going to set up a conditional statement that's actually going to put in a floor. And again, I mean, it doesn't really matter what you do. You're just going to set something up that's going to work for whatever aesthetics you've got going on. So I'm going to just say that if it's smaller than 0.5, so if whatever number is coming out of here between 0 and 1 is smaller than 0.5, then go ahead and add 0.5 to it. I mean, let's, I'm not going to get overly creative with this. But you can, you can set it up to do whatever you want. So we're going to take that number, add 0.5 to it, if this condition is met. Otherwise, just go ahead and do that number. And then whatever that result is, we want it to be even. And it just made the super little ones bigger. So they're just a bit more even in size. But they're kind of thin on the ground. And that's where our iterate node comes in. And we can just ramp this up until we're happy with what we see. Let's plug it into the rest of the stuff and publish it out and see what this looks like. Yeah, you know what, before we actually do that, let's, let's hook these two up the way I wanted to in the end rather than doing a halfway job because it's not going to take that long. So we'll call this crust and I kind of, you know, this is a moving thing. Uh, it's kind of all rolly and moving and it's all, you know, nothing's really still. And I'd like to sort of integrate this crust a little bit more with what's going on in the magma. Because it, it's not, they're not like islands with water going by them. They, they are affected, the crust is affected by the magma. So we're going to add one more step in here. I'm going to take this normal one without, without the dark lines in it. And I'm going to blur that. And then I'm also going to take a levels node because we're making a mask here. And I'm going to plug the results of our effects map in there. And I need a warp node. And we're going to warp one with the other. Not by a lot. I'm, you know, let's try it straight from here. We can mess with the global opacity on the effects map. We may be able to get away with not having to put that levels in there. You know, let's do that. Saves a node. And I had this set as a pretty small number. I had it at 0.2. So this mask that we've made with the effects map is just going to wiggle around ever so slightly according to what's going on here. And we take that and we're going to use that for all our blend nodes. I'm going to save myself some time. I'm going to dupe that out the way it is with just the mask set in there. And then we're going to start doing different things to different things. So we're just going to put in some placeholders for the emissive and the animations and colors that go along with that for now uh, because I want to finish this stuff up first. So this is going to work for both our emissive and our color right now. We'll do one for each. I just want to hook them up so we can start fooling around with them better. All right. Next we have our normal. We're going to need another height to normal and rather than using the normal, we, we, we really can't use the normal from here so we have to make a new one and we're going to do it off of this and then we are going to combine it with this and we're going to use an overlay so in keeping with with the, all the warping stuff that's what you know we're letting we're letting the the stuff underneath show through later on we're going to add some more distinction in here when we start doing the emissives but for now let's keep it like this and we're going to go down the line and just assign stuff here so we now have the magma underneath here and this is going to be our height so i'm going to put another just in case i need it i don't think i will levels note in there 
wait a minute. Oh, because of these guys. Let's take care of it here. This level's node. I'm going to make this relative to parent. And this one. And this one. So we've got the crust is higher than the magma. And you know this is all going to change because we're going to be we're going to be adding stuff into it later. But again, as a placeholder for now, that's fine. Next, we have our roughness. So we'll get another one of those. That comes in as our background, and we're going to need another levels node, and we're going to use this one and that. So I want my crust to be rougher than the magma. So I'm going to come back in here and I'm just going to darken this up. And again, for now, as a placeholder, that's fine. And finally, we're going to do the same thing to the metallic. You know what I just realized with the roughness? And that's all right. We'll take care of it later. We're going to actually want to invert it, but we haven't created those details yet. Let's just keep going with this and get them all plugged in and set up. Yeah, that's fine. Right now, the we'll lower down the metallic on these islands crust rather and again i'm not going to worry about it i just want to hook this stuff up so it's all set up right so that that's just the basic attachment of the crust with the magma and let's just make sure it still works so those islands are moving a little bit I think I'd like to see more of them. Let's see what they look like if there's more of them, but they're turning around. Let's see if we like that better. So I'm going to come back into my effects map, and let's put this in our rotation, and then up the iterations. I don't know. Let's make it 20. That's too much. Let's see if that gives us an effect that works. I'm just going to see what happens if I don't do the offset and just do the rotation. I think I like that better. Let's do that. Uh, you can do it however you want. I mean, you can fool around with it until you, until you like what you see. So it's either moving or not moving. Uh, the details are up to you, but you know, obviously it looks like big flat black things sitting on here right now, and that's not what we want it to be in the end, but that's where the next part comes in. And let's move on to the next step, which is kind of making that animated crust emissive, which is kind of all going to tie it all together visually. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into my library and get another black and white spot. And we're doing this because we kind of have to. I don't like it, the fact that we have to use two of the same nodes, but we're doing completely different things to them, not least of which is keeping this guy here is going to stay at parent size. And we're also going to put in an animation on its disorder, which is going to be different from the other one. So there's really no way around it. So we're going to get time. And we're going to do this super duper slow. And then I'm going to, well, I had, in my notes, I have a transform in here to move it uh, because we were offsetting it. But now that we decided to do that on the rotation, I'm going to leave off putting a transform in here. We may find that we need to add another node in here to get the emissives to kind of match what is literally going on with these islands. Because to be honest with you, it's a bit of a hack. I mean, it's not hard, but they're not running off the same timer. And you kind of have to just make them work together. But it's lava, you know, it's all mushy. It's not precise timing. But until we get the finished product, we don't know whether or not we're gonna need to fine tune it, is all I'm saying. Let's get a levels node and a gradient. And I'm going to make this a little bit more contrasting. And then I'm going to, before I get into this gradient, I'm going to go into the other gradient that I had here. And I'm going to copy my darkest color. 
because this is where the magma ends. And now we're going to start the bit where the crust begins, and that is, in my world anyway, the same color. So that color is going to be the lightest color in my crust, and then it's only just going to get darker from there. So I'm going to now pick my darkest color, which is probably here somewhere, like that. But what I'm working on now for this is I'm looking not to have such a smooth gradient. I want to create the little fizzy bits. Uh, let's go back to my original here. These, these little bits right here are actually pretty shallow gradients because they're taking that black and white spots and it's assigning some very narrow bands of color in there. So that's what we need to do. But we kind of want to keep it in this range, which is why I picked those two colors first. So I'm going to, they don't have to be exactly the same, but you know, I'm sticking with, with that. And I'm now going to find the spots where I want to put these things. Once I've got the ones I want selected, I'm holding down the control key and I can move them. So I can start setting up these bands. It just makes it a little quicker and easier. But see how it's starting to look kind of more like the, I don't know, like those crackles. I don't know what the word for it is, but it's like little sparkly embers or crackles. Yeah, okay, that's probably good. No, I want more. I'm going to get rid of some of this. Yeah, that's probably better. I want some, I want more patches of cool. I'm thinking about like what it, you know, what's purple here is going to stay relatively non-emissive and what's orange here is going to be what's emitting the most. So I'm now looking at how much of the, you know, how, how many of these sparkles am I going to be getting in my material? Probably more like it. Again, we can come back to this. So I've got these colors now, but I need to make a mask for what's going to emit and what's not going to emit. Because right now, this is what I have as, a, as an emissive mask. I mean, it's either emitting or it's not emitting. I don't have any of that subtlety, and I need to get it from these colors because I've decided what's hot and what's not according to this gradient map. So what it means is that I'm going to have to do it again only in, in grayscale. Now I cannot put this back into here. What I need to do is I need to get a grayscale conversion. And I'm going to dock that by pressing D. And all that's done is it's taken this color thing and it's turned it into a grayscale. But what it also means is that I can assign new colors to it. I'm going to have that be a grayscale output and we're going to find what that spot is. This is going to be a very, very shallow gradient, and I'm not sure where it is, but I'm going to go look for it. So I'm just going to find the band of color, and I know it's down here somewhere because this is where my, my hotter areas are. And there comes a point where we're talking about those grays, and so the further up I bring this, the, the less emissive I'm going to have. That's probably okay for now. And then the other thing I want to do with this is I want to invert it. And I'm going to get a blend node. And I'm going to make a darken blend with the mask that I already have. And what this has done is it's giving me some subtlety now in that big black messy mask. We don't really need it for the normals and stuff. I mean, it, it gets too busy in here. But we can do the color and emissive there. So it starts to break up that blackness. Okay, so now we have this black here, and we are going to replace it with the color we created. And I actually realized that we forgot to put something in here. Hold on a second. We've got too much emissive. I want to be able to, to have not all of that purple emit, and we're going to just need to create an extra layer of stuff here. I just got to get organized. Let's get a hue saturation lightness node. And we're going to, I mean, these, these two things here are identical, right? We're, we're, so we're just going to get rid of one of them. We're going to do it off the same one. And we're going to get a blend node. And we are going to combine these two separately for the emissive as opposed to the color. So this is, this is the color. And this will be the emissive. And now we have to make a mask that we can 
darken some of this stuff up. Well, we're, go we're going to darken it using the HSL. So we're not going to be putting black on there. We're going to be just delightening it. So it'll keep its color, more or less. But we only want to do it in patches. And that's what we have to find out now. And it's not going to be from these details. We're going to do it, I think, from here. Because the hot spots have, you know, they're, they're partially the crust, but they're also to do with what's going on with the magma. So whatever that thing is, we're going to need to be laying this on top of it. I think that I want to find more subtlety in here. So I'm going to take this warp and I'm going to lay it on top of something that's going on down here. Yeah, if you haven't guessed already, I'm making this up as I go along because it's different. Uh, we're using this as the background, so I'm going to have to bring this back up to parent size. And I think darken, perhaps. That's better. Because, you know, we really don't want, like, those blobby things. Wait a minute. Oh, that's for the color, too. I actually kind of like that. It's not the mask I used in my notes, but I'll be honest, I like it better. And we'll just add it into this one here for the emissive. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I like the mask better. It's a bit too much, though. So let's come back in here. At this point, there's no right or wrong. It, it, it's just a matter of taste. I don't like that smooth edge. I decided I don't want it. Let's try it back here again. Now, I'm going to go with my original plan. I thought I'd like it better with a gradient, but I don't. We have one more thing to do, and that'll probably make these bits look better anyway. I want to bring this grain in just as a roughness, just to make it look like drying up stone. So we're going to bring that into the normal as well. So that means before we put it on, lay it on top of here, we're going to blend this with what's coming up out of here. So this is our height map here. So we're going to need another height to normal, and we're going to use this mask. So we'll use an overlay here, but we don't really need this mask anymore here. So we're going to just replace that. So we've now got this grit is all over the place, and that does make it look better. Right. We're not going to do anything with the height. I think we really don't need to do anything else with all of these others because it's such a glowy material. I think I want that purple a bit darker. Yeah, I think we might be there. So I'm going to call that done, and I hope that you've learned something, and I'll see you in the next video.